Welcome to Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. Discussions on gear, technique, industry news, and interviews with the best in the business. Now, here are your hosts, Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Welcome to Shooting Spaces podcast. This is Rich Baum from Sacramento, California. And Brian Berkowitz here from New York, and welcome to the show. We have a great guest with us today, Larry Lorman, the founder of the PFRE blog, also known as Photography for Real Estate blog, which can be found at photographyforrealestate.net. Welcome, Larry. Thanks for coming to the show. Hi, guys. Yeah. So tell us uh, what's been going on in your world and uh, in the blogging world for you. Well, I've been doing I've been been doing this blog for uh, well, many I started roughly two thousand three or four, and um, I started it to help people. And I, I was working with my wife in the real estate business, and. Um, and this was back in the days where you couldn't go out and hire a real estate photographer. Just a handful of um, agents, realtors would would do it themselves, and so they would always be asking me questions because uh, I did it pretty much full time for my wife on her team, and um, so they were bugging me with all these questions. And after a couple of years, I just started putting all this stuff on on a blog and it it kind of just kind of grew and evolved from there and now you were shooting film back then larry or was it digital then yeah we actually um i i worked i worked at boeing f for many years and my wife got in the real estate business around 1985 and a few years after that she, she got to be a really compulsive marketer and she, and at that in back in those days you didn't there was no internet to you what the, the marketing was flyers yeah so um i helped her make flyers and uh, then in 1999 I retired from Boeing and started to work with her. And that was about the time where the internet was starting and, and you were advertising or putting a listing with photos on the web was starting to get popular. So I, I did that for her. But yeah, when we started, we, I got her a Nikon 606 with a 24 millimeter lens and a, SB 26 flash <laughs> and she would actually go around and do all her her own work and got to be pretty good at it. I'd love to see some of that work, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> actually what was what was really funny was you know all these all these the stuff that you have on your on your YouTube videos and all these solutions for window pull and <laughs> all this kind of thing. I mean, no one had solved, at least no one that I knew of had solved any of this stuff. And um, actually the first time that I, that I ran into it was I was shooting this $2 million listing on Lake Washington for her and the, and Mrs. Mrs. Homeowner, Mrs. Seller was just really distraught because I couldn't, on my photos, I couldn't get the view out the window and the inside at the same time. Yeah. And it, it was really a struggle. So, hey, Larry, I got to jump in though to, to have a piece, my peace of mind. And, and I try and say this and tell people that. I didn't, I invented almost none of everything I do. All I did is compile other photographers. Great. Uh, just, it's like teaching forever in the history and teachers. We're just, I'm not regurgitating, but I'm, I'm putting out there things that I have learned from other people. So certainly all the things I put on my YouTube channel, they're not my, they're not my inventions. They're You're just, just passing along the message. I, I'm just passing along the torch to the new kids. 
Yeah, yeah. And, well, it's it's really valuable because you know with this stuff to make make it so you can see out the windows and see the inside too. It's just like somebody's got. It. That explain how to do it. It's just adding value, you know. Um, yeah. Really, what are we shooting here? We're not, you know, we're we're shooting the views. We're not shooting the the couch, you know, things like that. Right. Larry, let me ask you: Were you working at Boeing as a photographer, or was this something completely on photography related? No, no, I wasn't. Um, I wasn't. I was a, a programmer. Uh, I I went I, at Boeing. I. I did network. I, I worked with the engineering staff, and that was back when we were just starting networking, connecting things together. And um, so I was, but at the time, or actually at about 1972, I I had a dark. I got a dark room and got into photography. So that was sort of a hobby for me. And then when 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 my wife Levi started to really need to have the photography she just came to me and said well how do you do this stuff and and so i would start helping well at first i helped her do it and she did it and then in 1999 when i retired from boeing uh after 34 years i i got i got to be her technical guy that did all the websites and of uh, photographing and actually we did and at the time when i first started 360 was she just loved these 360 um images and i do those for her and um, spherical panoramas yeah 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 i got so i just hated them <laughs> because there, there was so much work stitching them together i used to shoot for um yellow pages uh every scape and uh, I, I, I had my share of them, although we didn't have to do the stitching, just the, the shooting and the dealing with the customer and you name it. I just uh, I had enough of that. Yeah. Um, now, Larry, um, I wanted to ask you, um, tell, tell the, the listeners, especially the ones that don't know, but what is you've got your blog, uh, p uh, photography for real estate dot net. And then you've got the Flickr page. And what's just a little summary of, of the difference between the two? And, and tell us about the Flickr, because I'm always telling people it's a great resource. And if you don't know about it, you should know about it. Yeah, the, the, that's true. The, the Flickr group, the PFRE Flickr group is, um, is very important. And, and that's actually, we've had that since, I've had that since, um, the blog started back in 2006. The blog, I got the blog going in the kind of the form it is now, and and there was this this um, workshop I had in in Seattle, and and there was a great photographer up up there, uh, Aaron Lights, who said, you know, you you need to have a Flickr group. So at the time, I didn't even know what Flickr was. And he says, be, so people can post and, and there's a discussion group. And so I created the Flickr group. And uh, it's been a great thing in the, the, the way the way it's used is that people just post that you can post two photos a day on it. And then people, and then everybody comments and gives you feedback. And we're are very diligent about making sure <laughs> that the only stuff that's posted on the Flickr group is, is real estate marketing photos. So if somebody posts um, portraits or something else, we delete them. And so... And, so, and then there's the discussion group that's associated with that. And there's a lot of good discussion. And there's just a lot of um, great discussion about the photos. And uh, it's kind of interesting. You can see all the photos that are ever have ever been posted on there. And you can see 
going back who posted what and the discussion on them. And so it's a real learning place. Well, I, I will say that you are really, you're like the soup Nazi, man. If you don't put your lighting description in there, you come down on people. And I, I'm saying that in a loving way because you've come down on me so many times. Um, but I think it's really great. And that is something that is de definitely lacking in all of the Facebook groups is a consistent um, addition of lighting description. And that is so important. I try to tell uh, photographers, newer photographers, it's so important to, for one, and this is this was all before before Facebook for me. I saw on the Flickr group, I saw I learned to identify the work that I liked from the photographers I liked, and so I had a direction to go in. Like I want to go in that direction, and then you follow the photographers you like, and then you can see everything they do because you've got to put in a description. So it's a, a genius idea. Well, yeah, and the, the thing about putting your lighting description on there is that that was an original. Scott and Scott Hargis and I, Scott's also, he. Scott, is um, he a new new guy? I haven't heard of him before. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's, he's, he also um, is, is one of the three, um, uh, what do you call it, the administrators. Uh -huh. So he, he'll get after you too. <laughs> but what, we actually got that concept of putting your lighting description from David Hobby, who had the Strobist blog, mm -hmm. which is, it goes way back, way before PFRE. And David Hobby had a Flickr group that where he would do the very same thing. You had to say what your lighting was because that's, what his blog was all about. It was just about lighting. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm looking at some pictures and you really do have, and it's such a great platform to show your work. And the, the really great part too <clears throat> is you can search. Um, whereas people don't tend to search in, in Facebook. I think people are lazy, but if you go on to Flickr, you can search for anything you want, and you're going to find it because you're going back years with the info from the best in the business. I mean, it's great. Yeah, there's I'm looking, I came on in 2007, so not quite the newest guy, but been on Flickr for a while and really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of information there. Yeah, I'm looking here now and, you know, even just as a resource to learn composition and learn stuff from, just to give all the listeners out there a taste of what this Flickr group has, there's about 12,500 members, slightly under there, and almost 36,000 photos posted. So there's an intense amount of content for you to learn from out there. And so many iconic, for, I mean, to me, okay, maybe maybe I'm just a geek, but iconic photographers like, gosh, just uh, Scott Hargis to be able to have access to his information is just tremendous. And, uh, you know, so many other great photographers. And and tell us about your contest, uh, Larry, because uh, I'm sure a lot of people don't know about it. Um, and what is it about? And uh, what's the format? And what can you get out of it? What do you what do you say about it? Well, yeah, that's the that the contests are um, are are monthly contests. There's there's one contest for still photography, and basically it's it's it opens at the first of the month and closes at the fifteenth of the month. And it, both of the contests used to be on Flickr, but w within the last um, I think about six months. I I moved the the still contest off to a separate site, and the reason is that there was this this idea that that people people wanted to make the the entrance uh, anonymous because they felt like th they were there were people winning just because of their name and not because of their work. So, so, I, so now the, the, the still contest is moved off to a website called P 
PFRE contests, but there's a link on the on the PFRE blog on the left hand side, the the big yellow splotches that link to 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 the to where the the photos are. And there's there's also a video contest, um, which is still we still run it in the a, a Flickr group, and um, it's just it. Well, and what since we have fewer people entering the video contest, it it opens, and then we ju we we get at least six hopefully eight entries of, for videos before it closes and we have a vote on it. And just tonight is the announcement of, of the January 2018 video photographer or videographer of the month. And, um, and the, the, the nice thing about the contests are that we try to, we try to get the, the the um the jurors to comment um on the on all the entries and we 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 don't always do it but um we, we get a we get so we get a lot more comments about the the composition and the lighting or whatever uh on the contest so these these both of these contests are a great way to to learn from the the top people in the business because the, their their comment the jurors that are judging these things are are the top people in the business and they're adding their comments to it oh yeah they're they're the best and uh it's uh very very intimidating, but it's really great to get over that. I'll tell you something. When you've got, uh, I mean, you go down the list of, of the photographers that are your judges, and it's just like, ooh, I don't want to be in that room. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But tell me um, then something also. Um, I'm on your, on your blog, and I just see the header, and you've got just so many things. Coaching, cameras, lenses, Lightroom tutorials, outsourcing polls. Uh, just some great stuff. And Larry, may I ask you, um, what would you say to someone that has got their feet a little bit wet and is just learning something like get your vertical straight and things like that? What would you say to somebody? Where would you push them or say to, you know, where would you put your money to? Because so many people are into gear and I'm trying to always tell people, you know, I'm about education and about learning. But uh, what would you say to uh, somebody getting into this business uh, a scant uh, 20 years after you got into the business? There's always workshops. People really love workshops. And there, there are getting to be more workshops, your, uh, your workshop tour and uh, Tony Coangelo and... Brandon Cooper are doing workshops and that's how you pronounce his name. Coangelo. I got it. <laughs> I've been botching his name for about a month, man. I apologize, Tony, man. Oh God. I may be botching it too. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that. And then the other, the other thing th that really is helpful to people, you know, they always, people will always contact me and say, well, I want, a workshop to come to my city <laughs> and I always tell them, wow, Hey, you got to go where the workshops are because the chances are they're not going to come to your city. They they're just going to be in the big cities. And so the, that was one of the reasons I started the coaching thing was it's a way that people can, can, can make contact with on the coaching page is a list of 14 different people that do uh one-on-one -on -one coaching in in various forms mostly uh with say skype and what always what people want is they say oh we, i want to go 
follow a photographer, you know, follow somebody around and have them and have them just see what they do and all this. And, and I point out to them, but hey, you know what? People are unlikely to do that because they people in your own city don't want to train a, a competitor. So so one of the things with these coaches, these these people on this coaching list are some of the best in the business and they will use Skype and and do one on one coaching with you that is very very close to you know face to face kind of work and and you learn a ton of of stuff from the coaching and uh, so that's that's kind of a an alternative to to a workshop where you're going to spend a day or two face to face with somebody actually following them around and um so so that's one resource and then the other the other resources uh we have is is the the e the ebooks and videos we have we have links to um the getting started my two Ebooks are for people just getting started in the business. And then Scott Hargis's Lighting Interiors and Simon Maxwell's uh, uh, ebook and video series is for, for those that are kind of getting up from the, the next level and, and want to uh, go. And, and John McBay's book, is 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 just editing and, and doing post processing kind of work. We uh, just released a video from Nathan. We had a uh, Nathan Cool was our guest, and we just released a podcast today with Nathan, who's got some really great ebooks too. It's amazing. Oh yeah, what you can put yeah, out there I, now. And I will say one. I, I just want to say one thing about the coaching. I can say firsthand that I have been. I've only coached a couple of people, but uh, you know, more than a couple, but. I am just amazed. I couldn't believe the results of a few of the people that came in. Like, it was amazing. <laughs> they just came in not great. Let's just put it that way. It was, uh, ooh, I don't know about these photos. And within a, a few weeks, uh, you know, co one coaching session, they went out and a couple of weeks later, they showed me some stuff. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, <laughs> this is great stuff. So very rewarding. And it really can work. So I recommend it. Yeah, it just, it just takes somebody that that has a lot of experience to, to get you on track and be, and get you thinking in the right way. And then, yeah, it's not really that hard to do once you get going. And I want to say, Larry, back, uh, back to the ebooks e point that you were just making, you know, I'm the first one to give you a testament to the value in that and your blog. Cause when I was starting out, um, I used your blog as a resource to learn and I bought a couple of the eBooks that you sell on your site and that's how I got my start. And then obviously a lot of in the field experience helps significantly, but just, you know, to get a grasp of everything, your blog is, is great and just full of great tips. And, you know, the one thing that, the one thing I love about your blog is that you know, I don't come in and read a, a 2000 word article. Everything is quick to the point, to the punch. And a lot of the comments help the ideas along. So there's a lot of interaction between the readers as well. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great point. There is, there is a bunch of people that have, that, that, that do a lot of commenting that are really good for, uh, real estate photographers. And they kind of, you can just tell by their comments and the fact that they regularly comment on almost every uh, post that they're into helping people along uh, too, and and they they really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, it's I've gotten so this this thing about hearing about people that that the blog has helped is just. I mean, it's almost the the only thing that keeps me going. 
Well, you're the godfather, man. Well, Larry, you're the, the godfather, man. The classic one that I, I just can't, I, I have to repeat is there's this, there's this 18 year old kid in Youngstown, Ohio. His name is Christian Canuti. And he, he, uh, I, I got to talking to him because he contacted me that he, he lost my business book and he, he wanted me to send him another copy. So I got to talking to him and, and he's, he says, well, I'm in, I'm a senior in high school and I, every, every noon I go out and I read, I read your business book in the car. And then after I graduated from high school, I, I, started started doing this like you said and he says now and i'm now i am doing 20 shoots a week and i look at his blog and i do the arithmetic and this kid is you know is grossing 150 thousand a year and it, it's like it, it's just amazing he he uh and and it is it's an especially um Kind of poignant to me because I have a grandson, exactly his age, that I'm working on getting to do real estate photography, and I I can't get him out there, get him going to do this stuff. So, but it, it's a uh, it's really it really makes me feel good when I hear somebody like Brian or Christian say, "Oh, you helped me get going." And, well, don't feel bad. I've got a son that. I had him assist me a couple of times on shoots and I was just praying that he would pick up on it and then taught him how to edit and he was doing a great job. He wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody to their own thing, I guess. And Brian, you've got two little kids. You, two or, kids, Two kids? Yeah. You got to you gotta start yeah, training well, them, man. They're how old? Three years, three years old? old and three years old six and six months? now, so... Yeah. I saw the, I, the six-week-old, put a camera in there. <laughs> Yeah. So, Larry, what is, um, where can people, uh, what's the best way for them to best take advantage of your wealth of uh, resources and, and knowledge? Well, I, we've, we've got, with the front page of the blog has got, has got links to, to almost everything there is. It has links to the contest. It has links to the um, um, the work, it's workshop. It's got links, yeah. yeah, to all, so all the books. It's got links to the videos, Scott Argus's video series, Simon's video series, uh, John McBay's video series. Um, it has, um, oh, let's see. It's got links to oh to the page that lists all the um, oh, the post processing people, um, and then I've also the along the I over the years for a very long time I didn't I didn't take any advertise advertising and. And more and more, there are, there have been in the last couple of years, there have been really valuable companies that, um, that people that have contacted in me, like the um, uh, Full Frame, for example, um, the, uh, Grant in New Zealand that does as videos. Um, just all those links along the the right hand side are advertisers, and I I try to be very discreet and not it, not take anybody, but take only uh, really valuable companies that can that help uh, real estate photographers, you know, mm -hmm. do their job, and 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 uh, so there's there's the that and there's a there's a link to the one-on-one -on -one coaching page and there's a link to the free tutorials that has a link to all of your riches your uh youtube channel 
and there's several others um, that people that I I actually need to add um, add more to that list of people that have a really good um, a YouTube yeah channels there's for a real estate photographers wealth of people and what's your uh, what's your what's your blog address? Oh, it's photography for real estate dot net or dot com mm -hmm. or dot info or dot take org <laughs> right yeah yeah take your pick and um and that page has it has links to virtually everything yeah i'm looking at your blog now i'm on it as we speak and there are two two specific areas of the blog that I want to point out that I think will be really valuable to listeners or readers of the blog. And the first is on the top left, there's a search for area. And I think the search will come in very handy. I just, for example, I just put in real estate agent for a search just to see what came up. And I got dozens of posts that you've made over the years, um, anything regarding real estate agents. So I think if someone wants to learn something specific about a certain topic, just go use that search and type it in and see what comes up because you have so much content in here over the course of, you said, I think about 12 years that there's probably an answer or a post about what you're looking for. So definitely take advantage of that search feature to try to find what you're looking for. And the second area I want to point out is on the top right, the complete opposite side, which is just to subscribe to your email anytime there's a post. I know for me personally, I get the post about 9.30 a.m. I'm in Eastern time. And once that email pops in my inbox every morning, I run to see uh, what you posted about. So... I know I look forward to those emails and I know just so people don't have to run to the blog if they don't get a chance, get have the email come into you. And if it's, you know, a topic that I see in the email that I want to read later on, then I'll start and make sure I get back to it later. Um, but those emails in your inbox every morning are a good reminder that, uh, you know, there's content out here that you should check out every day. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point there. There that that search that that. I should probably have more explanation to go with that search, but that's a, you know, basically a Google search of the blog. And yeah, there are, um, uh, 2,800 posts on the blog over the years. And, um, yeah, there's, like you say, if you're, uh, if anybody asking a question, chances are somebody is already, I already asked the question and we've we've answered it and there's been a discussion about it so yeah oh that's a big problem people people are too lazy or just don't don't do searches when they ask the same question larry what's the best lens for real estate photography <laughs> <laughs> yeah right never yeah and there well, actually that lens th that's that's kind of interesting that lenses page uh i think brian might have referred to it the, the above the picture above of this where it says photography for real estate there's there's a bunch of uh, links and one of them says lenses and that that lenses page is the most popular of uh, a page on the blog and the reason is um it is over the years, um, well, everybody, everybody wants to know, well, what's a good wide angle lens for this camera or that camera? And that, um, that lenses page has a list and it has, um, it indicates that there used to be a, um, a poll on there that I took down because it was, it got to be so too much work to keep it up. But that those those little red stars alongside them, like for example, the Sigma ten twenty lens, it is one of the most popular lenses. Um, but no tilt shifts, for, Larry. No tilt shifts. Oh yeah, yeah. You, oh, that's a good point. I guess I should put tilt shifts on there. No, I, yeah. I, yeah. There's no reason to. I tell people just because everybody's using them doesn't mean you have to get one. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's the not the section lens. has some tilt shifts. It's not the lens, as um, our good friend Wayne Capelli has uh, pointed out to everybody. It's uh, you can do fine work on on very inexpensive gear. It's really not the gear, and I can attest to that. Thank you, Wayne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wayne just yeah discovered the the A six thousand, and that was the Sony A six thousand, and that was the most amazing discovery. <laughs> he got me. He got me with it. I even have the, a, I haven't even have an adapter to put my Nikon tilt shift lens on my A six thousand. Yeah, yeah. So I think Wayne does too. <laughs> I know. That's where I got. I do everything Wayne does because he's the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's. Uh, yeah, I I went down uh, not this last Christmas, but the Christmas before last in two thousand uh, uh, seventeen um, or sixteen, excuse me, and ha and had d dinner down in San Francisco with Wayne and and Scott Hargis, and uh, yeah, that was really a lot of fun. I'd like to be a fly on the wall in that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I think it's time. Uh, what do you think, Brian? Time to wrap it up? Yeah, sure. Let me let me just ask you one final question because I think that's good to end off with this. It, um, most of the posts on your blog are questions submitted from people. That's what it seems like because you, you always refer back to the original um, asker of the question. So if people have these questions um, for a topic of blog posts, how do they submit them to you? Okay, yeah, there's there's the, the big green button on the the right hand side of the blog says contact Larry, ask a question. You just click that and that will take you to a page that where you ask the question. And yeah, what I've done over the years, I didn't used to do that. And I found that if I, if I drive the posts by what people are asking that I, I kind of focus in more on what people are wanting than if I just go off and um, do my own thing, and and so yeah, if you if you have a question and you and you want to ask me or uh, what I do is when somebody asks a question, I I answer it um, as quickly as I can, and sometimes that'll be an off off the top of my head answer, or I'll reference a post where I've actually already answered it before. And then, uh, and then uh, usually it will take me a, usually a, a week. I'm, I'm have posts scheduled ahead about a week usually before I get to answering your question. And then when I answer it, then all the, the readers, all the regular readers chime in and, and help me, um, you know, give their opinion too, because one of the things you'll find by reading the posts on this, there, there is never one easy answer. There's always 14 different answers. And depending on, you know, your point of view and where you are, whether you've been shooting for, a long time or a short time and so you you just that way you get all the different answers well you're you're you nailed it man and i just i want to go into because you've said that i want to tell people to please we have on our uh website shooting spaces podcast.com we've got a ask us a question section and you can actually just record your question and then when we go to answer your question, we'll play back your recorded question. So maybe you, Larry, will call in and ask us a question and be our first answer, okay. uh, first call to call in. <laughs> so, oh, wait, yeah, as soon as I get a really tough one, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll call in and ask. Well, you. if we don't know the answer, we'll make it up. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, really, I want people to all know about uh, the op opportunity to uh, uh, record a question on our website, and then we'll be happy to answer it. And if we can't find the answer, we'll just contact Larry Lorman because he knows <laughs> he's been, he's like uh, Moses, man. He's been, he's been, you remember when you photographed the Red Sea parting uh, and that house on the hill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
Yeah. But uh, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I, I, I felt it important to include you because you've, you've been so generous to the uh, community um, with, with an invaluable amount of information. And I know from my experience doing the education, you, you do it for, because you love it and you do it out of your heart and that you care about it. And that's what it's all about. And I want to thank you for coming on so much. Well, thank you. It's great to talk to you guys. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I love to uh, to talk to people that have used the blog and appreciate it. So thank you guys a lot. Well, I'm, I'm hoping this podcast morphs into, you know, I, I, it was much needed. And uh, it's just another extension of like your, your, your work and uh, other people's works, you know, and uh, something I, we both, Brian, and I felt was a timely thing to do. So we're happy to, that we could have you on. Thank you, Larry. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. And I just want to remind everyone to subscribe and, uh, to the podcast via iTunes, Google Play, whatever platform you use and leave us a review. We appreciate all the reviews and the feedback we get. Yeah. And uh, Brian, I want to mention one thing. Somebody commented that I wish there, he said, I love the podcast, but I wish there was a way I could record it and listen to it on the go. How, yeah, what's can, up with that? You can download through iTunes. How do there's, you, a, there's a little download button and I think it downloads yeah. locally to your phone and, uh, or your computer if you want, and you can listen on the go. So don't let the lack of data or internet service stop you from listening. Just download before you leave the house. Yeah, and I want to say, Larry, you're you're coming in in with uh, our uh, buddy Sam Chen and uh, Nathan Cool. So we've had some good interviews, and we've got a few more in stores. So really, really, uh, thank you for coming on. Okay. All right. Until next time, everyone. Yeah, Rich Baum, Sacramento, California, saying thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll talk to you next. We'll talk to you. We'll talk to you if you talk to us. But we'll we'll we'll. Be at you next week uh, with something new and and, uh, really good uh, information for you. This has been Shooting Spaces, a real estate photography podcast. Subscribe to the show and don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow Rich and Brian on social media and at their website, shootingspacespodcast.com.